Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at Toyota and Subaru's D4S fuel injection system found on the BRZ and GT86. Taking a look at the components and the operation of this system. So what is D4S and what sets it apart from other fuel injection systems? First off, D4S stands for Direct Injection, Four-Stroke Gasoline Engine Superior Version. Yes, that's a very long and odd acronym to derive from three characters, but that's what Toyota has designated D4S. So when electronic fuel injection was first introduced, there were two main ways to get the fuel air charge into the engine, throttle body injection and port injection. Now, throttle body injection was more rudimentary and easier for manufacturers to switch over from carburetors to fuel injection as less parts needed to be changed and less new parts needed to be added to the system for it to work. Essentially, we were taking a mechanically injected carburetor and swapping it out for a modified throttle body with at least one or more fuel injectors in it to deliver the gas air charge to the intake manifold to be drawn into the cylinders via vacuum much as a carbureted engine atomized the fuel and delivered it to the cylinders. Later on came port injection. Port injection was more complicated and required more changeover than throttle body injection. Most port injected systems had at least one fuel injector per cylinder, usually in the intake runner, spraying fuel on the backside of the intake valve for that cylinder. With time, port injection became widely accepted and used on basically everything from the late 80s to current times. But recently, in the last decade, decade and a half, direct fuel injection has started to take over from port injection. The difference between direct injection and port injection is now the fuel injector goes through the cylinder head and sprays gasoline directly into the combustion chamber rather than spraying through the intake manifold on the backside of the intake valve into the combustion chamber. With direct fuel injection, you have an increase in engine power, a decrease in fuel consumption, and a decrease in emissions. Now, one big downside to direct fuel injection is valve carbonating. I know a lot of you have probably heard about this issue in the last decade and a half with the introduction of direct fuel injected systems. Because the direct fuel injector sprays gasoline directly in the combustion chamber, whereas the port injector sprayed it in the intake manifold on the backside of the intake valves, we no longer have that solvent gasoline dissolving any deposits on the intake valves. The reason these deposits form are mainly due to the PCV system or the positive crankcase ventilation system. The PCV system takes pressurized gases from the crankcase, pulls them into the intake system to reburn them. With removing this pressurized gas, you also pick up atomized oil particles. Well, these oil particles go through the system and collect in certain areas of the intake tract. Most of you that have turbocharged Subarus have probably noticed that you get some oil buildup in your intercooler, in your intake manifold, and in your throttle body. Naturally aspirated Subaru owners may also see this phenomena in their airbox, intake manifold, and throttle body as well. Partly because that atomized engine oil mist is being pulled into the engine, it condenses and it collects. One place that this oil mist likes together is inside the intake manifold runners and on the intake valves themselves. Over time, this oil mist turns into hard carbon deposits on the intake valves. Over time, this carbon builds up more and more, thicker and thicker, which is detrimental to the performance of the engine. These carbon deposits can also break off, falling into the combustion chamber, causing pre-ignition issues. They can fall off and hang between the valve and the valve seat, holding open valves and reducing compression. This was not an issue with port fuel injection because gasoline is a solvent and it was constantly sprayed in the intake tract. It dissolved any deposits in the intake manifold and on the intake valves. With the direct fuel injected system, there is no longer that solvent gasoline sprayed in the intake charge to keep the valves clean, so the carbon develops and gets worse over time. The only real way to remedy this is through manual cleaning of the intake valves, normally at 30,000 mile intervals on some engines. It just depends on how rapidly it builds up. That's where the D4S system comes into play. 
because Toyota's D4S system uses both direct fuel injectors and port injectors. By utilizing both port and direct fuel injection, they can get the best of both worlds. So the D4S system does more than just keep your intake valves clean. When your engine is cold and first started, it pollutes more than any other time. Your engine and your emission systems have to get up to operational temperature to lower those emissions. It does this by creating a lean but stable fuel mixture. This lean mixture burns hotter, creating a hotter exhaust temperature, and heats the catalyst much faster. The faster the catalyst is heated, the quicker the engine can get to closed loop and the faster emissions can come down. So with all the advantages of direct fuel injection, why is everyone not using something similar to the D4S system with the combination of direct and port injectors? Well, there's a lot of cost involved, there's a lot of software and programming involved, there's extra components on the engine and extra complexity. Toyota, of course, being Toyota, had no problems putting the money into designing this system, whereas other companies are just running regular direct injectors and you're having the valve carbonating issues. Some of you may wonder, well, why does the BRZ get the D4S system, but Toyota and Subaru are not putting D4S on Crosstrek, Outback, Legacy, Impreza, and other models where they're having some valve carbonating issues, and basically it comes down to Toyota not wanting to share the technology. The reason the BRZ got it is because the BRZ and GT86, formerly FRS, were co-developed by the two companies, so that's why BRZ gets to run D4S and no other Subaru engine does. Hopefully in the future, Toyota and Subaru can come to some kind of agreement to put the D4S system into place on other Subaru models that almost all have direct fuel injection now. So yes, if you do own a direct injected Subaru, which is basically 2018 and newer model years, you will be having issues with valve carboning down the road. It's just part of the direct fuel injected system. So if all of the advantages of direct fuel injection, what are some of the downsides? Well, aside from the valve carboning issues we talked about earlier, which are dispelled with the D4S system, another issue is safety in servicing these vehicles. Port injected systems were fairly safe to work around as their maximum fuel pressure was around 60 PSI and the fuel was safely contained in fuel injection rated rubber hoses. The direct injection system on the other hand is much more dangerous and takes much more caution in working around as it runs greater fuel pressures. A lot greater fuel pressure, 2000 PSI and above. This makes it very dangerous to work around if you don't know what you're doing and you can hurt yourself pretty easily. The reason the direct injectors need this higher fuel pressure is because they have to spray against the compression and the pressure in the cylinder. Lower fuel pressures would not allow the gas to push past the pressure that builds up inside the combustion chamber. With these higher fuel pressures, you don't have the reinforced rubber hoses anymore as now you have to have steel hard lines like a diesel. So now we'll get into the components and operation of the D4S system. In the old port system, you had two different styles. You had a returnless or return system. There was a low pressure fuel pump that would push the gasoline from the fuel tank up the fuel lines to the fuel rail and pressurize it. In the returnless system, the fuel pressure regulator was located in the fuel pump module. The fuel pump only pushed as much fuel to pressurize as needed to the rail. In the return system, the pump pumps fuel to the rail, pressurizing it to the point where the fuel pressure regulator sets it. Any fuel in the rail past the regulated pressure is bled off in a return line back to the fuel tank. Now on the high pressure side, there is a returnless system. The low pressure pump also supplies fuel to the high pressure pump in a returnless style system. The high pressure pump then increases the pressure, pushes it through the hard lines to the direct fuel injector carbon rail. Then it's sprayed through the direct fuel injectors into the combustion chamber. Now, talking about the high pressure fuel pump, the high pressure fuel pump is a mechanical pump much like found in diesel engines. The pump is located on the cylinder head and is mechanically articulated by the camshaft. The camshaft pushes on a plunger to make the fuel pump work. This is how we step up from 60 PSI to over 2000 PSI. So for this system, we have two fuel pumps, a low pressure pump and a high pressure pump. We have eight injectors for this four cylinder engine four port injectors, and four direct injectors. So now that we've talked about these components, let's take a look at them on the engine itself. 
So at first glance, the FA20 found in the BRZ or the GT86 might look like any other Subaru engine. Everything is pretty much in the same location. Throttle body is on the front of this engine, whereas most Subarus are on the back. The alternator is normally mounted in the center with a power steering pump and an AC compressor. AC compressor does go here, but it's not on this engine. Alternator is moved off to the side because these cars had electronic power steering and did not need a hydraulic power steering pump. Also, due to the layout of the engine compartment, they wanted the throttle body on the front side of the engine. Now, aside from that, let's take a look at the actual D4S system. And to see a lot of that, we're going to have to move some of this stuff, take some covers off, and then later take the intake manifold off. So let's get down to it and take a look at the components. So here we see our connectors for our fuel lines. We've got our fuel feed for our port injectors, and we've got our fuel feed for our high pressure pump. So two 12 millimeter headed bolts hold these covers in place. And pop off like so. Now on this cover, on this side, you see there's a big layer of foam. That is a sound deadening material for the high pressure pump. The high pressure pumps make noise. Some might interpret it as an engine noise or an issue with the engine, or it might just be annoying. So they try to insulate the pump so they're not as loud. So now with the cover off, we can get a better look at our high pressure fuel pump. We can also see our fuel rail and our two port injectors on this left-hand side of the engine. Another cover on the opposite side of the engine. Again, two 12 millimeter headed bolts hold this cover in place. With this cover removed, we can see our other two port injectors and the fuel line. So to see our direct fuel injectors and the hard lines and fuel rails for that system, we have to remove the intake manifold. All right, so now the intake manifold is out of the way, we can see our high pressure fuel pump the hard line that goes from the fuel pump to the fuel rail, our high pressure line around to this rail, our high pressure fuel pressure sensor, and our other two direct fuel injectors. With the intake manifold off now, we can look down the intake runner, and we do see some buildup in there, but we don't see the buildup on the valves that you would expect a 100,000 mile engine to have. I'll put in a clip, a couple pictures of the valve carbon normally associated with direct fuel injected systems. So there you have it, a quick rundown and overview of the Subaru and Toyota D4S system. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.